الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقال سبحانه وتعالى بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله ساعه شيء عظيم اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has ordained upon us in the Quran to have taqwa and in the ayat that we mention always being referred to ya ayyuhal ladina amanu and the people of iman but if you look in surah hajj and other parts in the quran you will also find ayat referencing all of mankind ya ayyuhan nas ittaqu rabbakum inna zalzalata verily the shaking o mankind have taqwa of your lord because that shaking that earthquake that of the sa'a of the of the day of judgment is something azim when we look at these ayat in the quran like we read the quran we open the mushaf and we read these ayat and when we hear the quran whether it's a qari or somebody reciting and we hear these ayat it should take away all other stress from our life but this is the hard part like today you are here and i am here and every one of you is stressed about something right maybe it's in the subconscious but you're stressed about something somebody's stressed about money maybe a wife is stressed about her husband a husband is stressed about his wife parents about children children about parent maybe jobs maybe corona maybe covid maybe immigration maybe some legal thing you got going on maybe you got a ticket this morning and all this stress that is taking up our time right day and night how can i make it big how can i make billions how can i get a lamborghini how can i do this how can i do that how can i get married to this person how can i get away from this person whatever you are dealing with think about that in comparison with the akhirah and all that stress should become insignificant any imagine May Allah protect us. I, I know sometimes these examples you may not like, but I want this to hit home. I want us to wake up. Imagine somebody walks in here and tells you that I'm going to kill out of the people that are here, 99 of you out of 100, I'm going to kill. Only one's going to make it out of here alive. Somebody walks, there's some right-wing extremist, Islamophobe, whatever, walks in here, AR-15's out, and he makes that statement. You guys will stop listening to me. I won't even exist to you. <laughs> I will blow out in your mind, right? Every stress you have will blow out. You will not be thinking about am I going to make it back for logging in to work? Uh am I, what am I going to eat tonight? How am I going to pay my electric bill? All of that will be gone. The only thing you'll be worried about is how can I be that one? <laughs> right? Be honest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum. O mankind, have a taqwa of your Rabb. Inna verily, the zalzala of the sa'ati, of the hour, something azim. In the tafsir of this ayah, in the tafsir of this ayah, Imam al-Tabari, he brings a, a rawaya, a narration about what is the zalzala and there are many ahadith on this some of them mentioning the shaking of the day of judgment but this this hadith is very interesting it says about on the day of judgment when all of mankind is there adam salam will be brought forward and he will be told to separate between the people of the nar and the people of jannah from all of the children of Adam, not just Muslims or believers or the Ummah, the Prophet or this time, 
all from the time of Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment, from all of them to separate. Adam alayhi salam will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like how? This is so many, I mean, there's, I mean, who knows how, what the number is, 7 billion alive today, but imagine what that number will be. Like how do I separate? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him that out of every 1,000, one will be in Jannah, the 999 in the Nar. How many in Jannah? From the thousand? One. Oh. How, are, how are you still worried about other things? How are you worried about what I look like? How do, I, how do you worry about uh, if my socks match? or <laughs> How do you worry about these other things when we have something like that in front of us? The Sahaba radiyanhum, they started to cry. When they heard this hadith, they started to cry. They said, oh, Messenger of Allah, look at us here. I mean, the Sahaba were sitting there and said, well, look at us here. How many of us will make it? They didn't go, oh, no, I'm good. I'm a Sahabi, what do you mean? I was in Badr, I was this, I was that. No. Today, we, we have this false expectation. Like, I'm going to sin on sin. And I'm going to do whatever I want. And I'm going to sacrifice ahkam of sharia. And I'm going to do every haram that I want to. Whenever I want to. I'll make tawbah when I want to. I'll do good when I want to. I'll do the whatever I want. And then Allah will put me in Jannah directly because I want it. Who are you? Who am I? So here the Sahaba, they were actually attentive about this. So here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he told them no. That amongst the children of Adam, there will be many that are from the kuffar. And this is not about you. There will be many. As we look at today, the majority of the world is kafir. And if you look at the history of mankind, the pious and the good have usually been few. I mean, there was a time of Nuh salam and a time of Adam salam when the whole world was Muslim. But after that, I mean, the people who love this dunya and they love their, their, their I mean, desires which takes them to shirk and kufr and things, are usually more. And the people are able to control it. I mean, imagine today is the day of Jum'ah. Jum'ah is fard, at least on every free man that's here, is fard. How many people, Muslim, forget about everybody else, didn't go for Jum'ah? If every Muslim man in San Diego came for Jum'ah, wallahi, our masajid, forget our masajid, the streets wouldn't have room. We know it's fard. But we want to do what we want to do. We want to sell out. We just want to be liked. And, and, and this is the problem. We don't put the akhirah in front of us. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the mushrikeen? This ayah that, that I'm going to quote is really about mushrikeen. But, but look at our situation and theirs. That they are the ones yuhibbun al-ajila. They love... That which is fleeting. That which is running. Ajal. Quick. Fleeting away from them. Huh? Ooh, think about this ayah. What do they do? They love this dunya. Which is running away from them. And they throw behind their backs. They ignore a day that is heavy. Yawma thaqeel. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it heavy. Yani shayun azim. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls something great. Imagine the importance of that. Imagine me and you on the day of judgment. Imagine me and you in the grave. Me and you being raised in front of Allah. Imagine me and you giving hisab. Imagine that day. And imagine my sins and your sins. And imagine when somebody asks you the truth and you lie. And imagine when somebody tells you take a qasam and you lie. And imagine when you sell out the religion, when you water down the religion, when you don't want to be seen somewhere or with somebody because you're afraid. Imagine on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you that these were my ibad, these were my slaves standing on the hut. Why did you not stand with them? All of your excuses in front of Allah, what will they be? Imagine somebody asks you, what is the ruling in Sharia about a certain thing? 
whether it's LGBTQ, XYZ, whether it's hudud in sharia, whether it's whatever it may be, right? We don't make up a religion. We present a religion, right? We have no authority to make the religion, to change the religion. Our responsibility is to convey. Ma alayna illa balaghul mubin. It's not upon us except to convey clearly, with hikmah, with wisdom, with the proper way. Yes. But imagine you know, but then you stand on a stage, then you sit at work, then you go out for dinner, then you sit in a classroom and you sell it out, water it down. And now on the day of judgment, you're asked by Allah, I revealed the Quran, I, I got you the preserved sunnah, the sahih a hadith, you knew this and this and this, what happened? All of this, for what? For that which is ajila. People sell their religion for money today, it shocks me. Yani, what's that money going to do for you? Right? You see Muslims opening up liquor stores. You see Muslims dealing with riba. And you see these uh, imma and ulema who give themselves amazing titles and this and that and doctor and sheikh and mufti and alim and allama and this and that. Saying, yani, it's halal. Yani, yani, fil haqiqa. Yani, there's fi khilaf. This is the one word. Fi khilaf. Fi khilaf. Everything is khilaf. What is the evidence? In adilla? What is the dalil? The proofs? Ma huwa fi al-Qur'an? Ma huwa fi sahih ahadith? Ahadith al-sahih hujja. Wa qawl al-rajul laysa al-hujja. Wa qawl al-alam laysa al-hujja. Any authentically established hadith, this is a proof. Statement of a man is not a proof. If you think you can fatwa shop and have it as an excuse in front of Allah, then go back to the Quran and read about those that Allah SWT talks about that they worship their priests and rabbis. And when the Sahaba, they asked the Messenger of Allah, Oh Messenger of Allah, when we were Christians or Jews before, we didn't worship them. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tell them? Didn't you take halal that which was made haram because of them? Didn't you make haram that which was halal because of them? You worship them. Today somebody comes, riba is halal. And we're like, oh, brother, brother, what do you know? He's a gynecologist, he's got a PhD. So, of course, he's got to know. Pediatricians are experts in sharia now. So, when you do that, and you see the hukam from Allah in the Quran, you see the sahih ahadith and you reject them, you are worshipping these people. May Allah protect me and you upon the kitab, the sunnah, and the way of the salaf of ummah. Ah. Now today, the test has come to us. Today, the test has come to us. Do we let this hayatul dunya, the worldly life, be our precedents. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Quran? Wailu lil kafirin min adab in shadid. Alladina yastahibun al hayat al dunya ala al akhira. This is the sifa of the kafir. That the adab, the strict, harsh, horrible punishment is the glad tiding for them. Huh? What is their sifa? What is their characteristics? Alladina yastahibun al dunya. They are the one that love the dunya. Over the Akhir. So my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I know we all go through tests. And we all go through stress. And we all go through our daily lives where we're struggling and pushing and, 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 and it's hard. I know. But you have to put things in perspective. You have to put things in perspective. I'm not stuck. I'm just repeating. You have to put things in perspective. You have to be from those. Not, I'm, I'm talking to myself. I'm not excluding myself from this. Me and you have to be from those who struggle in this life. Ashaddu bala'an anbiya. The hardest tested are the anbiya, thumma salihin, and then the pious. Right? So we will go through the struggles, but we cannot let those struggles, we cannot let our worldly life, we cannot be so concerned what people think about me and how they look at me and what are they going to call me, what label are they going to, are they going to call me a Wahhabi? <gasps> Not a Salafist, oh no, fundamentalist, whatever. 
I don't care what they call me. I'm a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. This is enough for me. Allah called me Muslim in the Quran. Rasul Salam called us Muslim. We are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. You can call me anything you like. I will not give up the Quran or the Sunnah or the way of the Salaf of the Ummah because of what you want to say. Nobody gave anybody else authority to take me on or off the manhaj. This is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I will speak the truth. I will stick to the truth. I will strive and struggle to be upon the truth. I will strive and struggle to be the best Muslim I can be. I will strive and struggle to get away from the sins and my own shortcomings, knowing that I have them. Knowing that I have them. But I want to make that the number one priority in my life. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala think of me? How is Allah pleased with me? Is Allah happy with me? Is Allah or is, is what Allah ordained my priority in life? If I miss Salah for something else, I should think in front of Allah, what will I answer? It was time for Salah. Allah didn't give you two minutes to make Salah. You have hours, hour, two hours, depending on the Salah. You have this big gap to make a four or five minute Salah. How did I miss it? What was greater than that? We have Ramadan coming up. How can I, if I'm physically able, away from anything that impedes in the Sharia, the fasting, then what test, what job, what friends, what party, what invitation is more important than Ramadan? Allah blessed me and you to be Muslim amongst a sea of kufr. May Allah make us from that one that enters the Jannah out of a thousand. How can I be ashamed of that? How can I hide that? How can I not be worried about those other people that they also enter the Jannah? With these priorities, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that use the Jum'ah, use the Khutbah, use each Dars, each halaqa, each thing we hear, every Ayah in the Quran, to be something that gets implemented in our life. Otherwise, the Quran, luck or alayk. Either the Quran is for you or upon you. If you read these ayat and you hear these ayat and you ignore them, you throw this day of judgment behind you, wallahi, it will still come. But you will not be prepared for it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that practice on what we hear. قولوا قولي هذا استغفر الله إن الله غفور